Hey guys, welcome back to Cisco Nate. Uh, so in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to configure a Firepower 6.6 backup to a Windows Server 2016 NFS share. Now, it really doesn't matter what your remote storage device is, whether it's SIFS, NFS, FTP, uh, whether it's Windows, a, a server, applet, or Linux, doesn't matter. All that matters is we can configure backup from the FMC to a remote storage device. It just so happens in this video that it's Windows Server 2016 is what I'm using and it's NFS. Now I'll also go into a few minor gotchas that might happen. I did run into an issue on my Firepower, a fresh install, trying to integrate it to the remote storage device, but I'll cover that for you guys so you don't have to worry about it and we'll get right to it. All right guys, so the requirements for this video are pretty simple. You need a Windows Server 2016 and Firepower Management Center 6.6. .6. Obviously in my case, I'm running mine on VMware ESXi, but you don't need that. All you need is those two functional software platforms. Uh, the next thing you need is access to those devices with a browser from a computer on the same network. And that is it. That is solely all you need to configure this video. Now, in this video, I am using those particular pieces of software and or servers. You don't necessarily need to do that. You could choose to use Windows uh, 2012 or any other Linux-based remote storage device using SIFS or NFS or FTP. It doesn't matter as long as it's a protocol supported by the FMC. But again, in this video, this is what I'm using. All right, we'll get to it and see you guys in a minute. All right, so we're finally to the fun stuff. All right, as usual, I'm gonna start off uh, the way I normally do by opening up everything I need. Now, in this case, you've already got a Firepower Management Center 6.6 .6 stood up. Uh, so what I'm going to do for this video is I'm going to remote desktop into my server. You will need access to your server as well. And I'm going to approach this video as if you've got a server set up, but have not configured anything, in particular, the NFS sharing yet. So I'm gonna go down on my Windows Server 2016 and go to server manager. Now, at this point, uh, most of you may or may not have done this, but to enable the feature, which is NFS file storage, uh, you need to go to add roles and features, click next, choose role-based or feature installation because this is a feature, select the server that you want to enable this feature on. Now, in this case, I'm running one single server, so there is only one to choose from, but if you're running a multi-domain controller or deployment, you need to select the right one. Click next. Now, under the server roles, if you drop down the file and storage services, and then drop down the file and iSCSI services, you wanna make sure that server for NFS is installed. So I've already done that, but in the case that you haven't, you would check this box and click next, and then click install and click confirm. And it would likely install the service without needing to reboot the server. Once you've done that, you're not done. You've enabled the service, but now you need to pick a place to store your files and to share those files. So I wanted to treat this as a user on this box uh, because I wanted it to be essentially a machine account that is getting access to the files, the backups. So I went under C, Users, and I created a folder called FMC Backup. Now, once you've enabled the NFS sharing service, when you right click one of the embedded menus under properties is NFS sharing. So you click on NFS sharing and under here would say that it's not being shared. I've already done that here. To change this or see how to enable it, click on manage NFS sharing. And it's simply just checking this box. Now the important things here are, if you are accessing this from Firepower, you can leave this configured as default with no server authentication enable unmapped user access and allow unmapped user Unix access by UID GID. The one thing you need to change from the default settings is down here in permissions. By default, these users, i.e. all machines, will be read only. In order to create a successful backup for the FMC, you need read write. Now you do not need to check allow root access. You just need read write. And then you click okay, apply, okay and close this drive is now successfully shared with nfs and if you click on the properties you'll see it is shared as this and this is important because you will need this information when you enable nfs file share um, in the fmc you need to know the network path particularly 
the directory. The network path portion here can be a domain name or an IP, and I prefer to use IP because it's less likely to have issues with DNS or other services that have to also be configured properly. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this window here and leave this up. I'm gonna back out of my remote desktop session. So now I'm gonna open my browser. I'm gonna to navigate to my FMC, and I'm going to log in just like one of you would. Oh, I already logged in, so the cache is keeping me logged in, that's okay. The first thing you wanna do is navigate to System Configuration. And under configuration, you want to scroll down the left-hand side to remote storage device. Now, in my configuration, I've already added all of the information you need. Most of you would arrive at a screen that looks like this. Simply drop this down to NFS, put the IP of the server, and remember that directory you needed to know? Since mine is hosted directly on the NFS share as FMC backup, it doesn't matter that it was in the C users FMC backup folder. What matters is how it's presented through the NFS share and it's presented through the computer identity directly with this FMC backup directory. That's why I don't have to add C users and then that directory. So simply the IP and then the directory that it's being shared under and check use for backups. Now one good thing to do at this point is hit test. And one of the things that I ran into with FMC, my particular FMC, is this test failed. And the reason it failed was on the back end, NFS has multiple versions. You've got NFS version 2, version 3, and version 4. The way the uh, negotiation happens to decide which NFS version is, is that the machines connect and say, what version of NFS do you have? And then they settle from a top-down perspective. So they both check to see if they have NFS v4 running and supported, and if not, it drops down to three and then two, whichever ones they have running. Now, in my particular FMC, for some reason, the statd, uh, rpc.statd service was not running. RPC statd is specifically used for NFS v3 and v2. It's part of the network level um, management, NLM, I can't remember the full term, but NLM. And because the service hadn't started correctly, it could not then lock or unlock the file. So you got this weird error saying uh, to use the dash o no lock option to keep locks local uh, so that you could then mount the directories. So the bottom line was in reality, RPC statd was actually running, uh, but in order to get it working, I had to give it a kick and simply adding dash o no lock, if you get this error, add dash o no lock and test will kickstart and rehook everything together so that it knows statd is actually running. Then you can come back and uncheck this box and simply click save. After you save, it'll tell you that the connection was successfully established. Remote storage uh, device configuration saved successfully. Now you can come back to system, tools, and backup. Now the interesting thing is here is if you come to System Tools Backup, this allows you to perform an ad hoc backup, a one-time, do-it-right-now backup. So I can click Firepower Management Backup. I can enter the details of the name. I want to make this my second FMC backup. Backup just the configuration. Uh, I don't care about events or TID. Uh, events is all the logs and stuff. It'll take up extra space without keeping the important things that you really need. That is a configuration and then you can hit start backup. Now you also have the option of adding an email alert. I have not set up an email relay, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, so you click start backup and it will back up. Now, if you plan to do this on a regular basis, what you wanna do is set up a backup profile. And the backup profile allows you to dictate the settings that will be used for a scheduled backup. So I come here and say FMC repeat backup and I can hit save as new. Now, what were the settings that were in there? It was simply what I had the first time to back up the configuration, back it up to this location. That's all, that's all that the backup profile does. Now that this backup profile is here, I can then come up and do a tools scheduling. And the scheduling allows me to add a task that will do a repeated backup, in this case, job type backup, do it recurring, 
it'll change the menu here and I can say repeat every week starting on July 16th. I'm going to do it on, yeah, July 16th. Uh, run it at 4 p.m. What is it? 3.28. I'll say run it at 3.30. And today is Thursday, so I'll say repeat on Thursday, 3.30, once a week. Um, the job name will be called FMC Weekly Backup. I want to do a backup of the management center. Now at the same time you could do a device level backup. That would require you to have a device backup profile created. In this case I'm just doing the FMC. And then you can add a comment. You can also add an email so that whenever the backup's done you get an email. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And this now commits it as a cron job on the back end. This is a Red Hat Linux back end. Uh, that will execute at the time I specified which is 3.30 every Thursday. So in about two minutes time or one and a half minutes this job will fire off. Now I'm going to go ahead and coast here and let you guys continue to watch what's happening. I'm going to mute myself and in a minute or so we'll see this job kick off and we'll watch it successfully back up to the NFS Windows Share. Okay, so this is the first time I've actually ever scheduled a job. So let's go, let's go check what's happening here. Look at that. At 3.30 it actually kicked off the backup. So we can wait a minute, uh, watch it finish doing the scheduling. Now, if your backup fails, it is likely due to the fact that your 90% default threshold for storage base has been exceeded. So you can see it is actually naming this job based on the time, date, and everything. FMC Weekly Backup 2020, blah, blah, blah. I should be able to come over to my remote desktop and access that share, which I had under C, Users, FMC Backup. And at some point, I should see a backup relatively named that somewhere here. Uh, let me see if I can navigate through these folders, remote backups. <coughs> backups, remote backups. I have no idea where it is here, but we'll find it. There it is. So that's the old one I did from 7.15. Once this current backup is done, you should see it pop up in this directory. Now you might be wondering how this directory is structured and why there's all this weird stuff. The issue is that you can back up your FMC as well as your managed sensors. So your Firepower 2600, 4600. Uh, you can also back up your uh, Firepower Threat Defense devices, your 1010, your 2140, your 2120. You get it, right? So the devices it manages, you can back up. So what's really happening is here is it's generating a UUID for the directory of the device that it's backing up. In this case, the UUID of the FMC is this folder here. This is a device that I have managed, which is my Firepower 1010. Now, it's not very nice for you looking at it, but it's not meant for you. It's meant for the automated system, right? So it doesn't matter that we cannot read it. What matters is it can read it and keep track of it. All right, so now that we've gotten that out of the way, um, I'm going to go ahead and check the status of the backup here. And we're just going to verify once it is done that the backup was successful. So I do want to eventually see that zip file show up in that directory and then I can open that directory to verify that there are the configuration files in it. Now for the most part it just zips up a bunch of files, literally files from directories that are on the, the uh, device including uh, database uh, entries. So I'm going to go ahead and double click this. I'm going to say just show me a notepad and there we go. You can see this is just a file. It's not well formatted because I opened it with the wrong application. If I actually open this instead with WordPad, it should be a well formatted file then. There you go. You can see it's a bunch of configuration data from inside the Firepower Management Center. So that doesn't matter. We're just going to wait for the backup to finish, verify it did successfully backup, and call it a day. So it's getting pretty close to the end. I told it to ignore the TID data. It still runs the process to back it up and then it decides, oh, never mind, we don't need to back up anything. So don't be freaked out if you see this. Should be done in about another 10 to 20 seconds here. I'm gauging that based on my previous backup. And since I'm only config backing up the configuration, not additional event logging that has accumulated, it should be just about the same time to back it up. In this case, it is creating the backup file, which means it is just about done, and there we go. So let's kick back over to our desktop one more time, refresh the directory, and there it is, FMC Weekly Backup. <coughs> uh, 
Oh, it's still being written to, so give it a minute. Either way, here's our directory. We see that we have the backup there. It was successful. FMC says it was successful. Now you're set up for recovering your system should something happen to it. I'll catch you guys in another video. I'll probably make one that shows you how to restore from this directory. But until then, have a good one.